For Peter, he's the spiritual head of the church who has authority to speak on matters, do doctrinal matters and, uh, and theological matters. And I follow him 100% on those issues. Otherwise, I wouldn't be a Roman Catholic. And, and so I believe that deeply. Well, there's your uh, Marco Rubio. That's all. Now, <clears throat> we talk a lot about radical Islam and we separate uh, Muslims from radical Islam. We, we've been all been taught to do that. Haven't we all been taught to do that? Through political uh, correctness. Oh, I mean, I mean radical Islam. I don't mean Muslims. I mean ra radical Muslims. Now they look at you anyway. 51% of U.S. Muslims want Islamic law. 25% okay with violence against infidels. Those are U.S. Muslims, you, sh you idiots, you. You morons. For attacking Trump, for seeing what's going on. Islam will dominate the world. Freedom can go to hell. Those are the signs they're holding up in London. So we're aware of radical Catholicism, radical Islam. is a little different, you say. How can you equate radical Catholicism, as exemplified by this pope, and radical Islam? A caller yesterday got infuriated and called me so angrily. How dare you attack Catholicism that way? I said, well, I want you to understand I'm not attacking Catholicism. You don't need me, but I'm one of the great defenders of of Catholics and Catholicism. I have been for my whole 21 year career. I am worried about radical Catholicism of the type espoused by this Pope. And he sputtered and muttered and said, how could you compare that to radical Islam? I said, my friend, I can do this in the following way. Bombs kill people, but radical ideas kill nations. I thought that was very insightful of me. And a bomb Basically, in a bomb maker, you can see from a distance and maybe stop a bomb maker in a bomb. It's very hard to see radical ideas and stop them. The only thing we have is the truth. And I hold this truth up like a cross before the Pope. I hold my truths, which are self-evident, in front of this Pope. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. We talk about the Pope's agenda and who, who he is, where he comes from. It's astonishing. I mean, it's, the, the, it's, it's, it's Lenin. It's Vladimir Lenin from, Va from the Vatican. There's nothing different between what this Pope is espousing other than the false science of global warming. And I say false because the essence of science is uh, debate. To say it's over and there's no debate indicates, to, indicates they're not scientists. It indicates that they are dogmatists. The minute you get a stooge like Obama, all the science is in. Anyone who disagrees should be cast into hell, into the flames of hell. Unbelievable to me. Have a church going back to the 1500s here. What in the world does this man know about climatology? If I sat down with Pope Francis and I said, excuse me, sir. Can you tell me what the evidence is with the Vostok ice core samples that would lead you to believe that man is destroying the earth? Do you think he would know what the Vostok ice core samples are or what they tell us any more than a Sean Penn or Bill Maher in their haze, in their Hollywood hazes? Do they, do they know anything about science? No, they're good comedians or actors, whatever. I don't take that away from them. Penn is a good actor. Mar is a stooge. I don't like, I don't think he's a good comedian at all. I think he's a fraud. But let me get back to the, the point at hand here. I criticize the message, not the, not the church. I just received an email from a Hollywood friend. I don't know if he says, yes, I can. You, okay. He's a, a friend of mine, and he, he sent me this. I got to find it now. I, you know, this is the problem during a show. I do it. I do it. On, here is it. This comes to me from my good friend. Doug Urbanski in Hollywood. And he says, there is no more strong Catholic than me, meaning him. I can loudly attest that nothing about Savage is remotely anti-Catholic. Stalin made it the number one mission to infiltrate the Catholic Church. We have been feeling the effects of that success more and more for 50 years. I have spoken to the top expert on this matter. Shocking stuff. The Catholic Church has spent its life fighting against what this Pope preaches. And since leftism has been on the scene... Every pope in the church has loudly railed against communism and leftism in general. Between us, it is not even Catholic. A Catholic is all about free will. 
You can make yourself a saint or not, but it is not about government policies, confiscation, regulation, enforcement. Hoping all is well with you, Douglas Urbanski. Doug is a Catholic. He knows me very well. He's never heard me utter anything but positive things about the Catholic religion. And he says, if you like, you can quote me. You are a true Catholic defender, always have been. You don't have to quote me. I was just sending sentiments of the truth. But of course, you may. I hope all is good with you. We need a good gossip one of these days. <laughs> That's him and I. He doesn't know I'm going to be living in his neighborhood. So <laughs> I'm going to be in L.A. more than you may think. So anyway, we're talking about, he, you know, I don't mind anything about religion. I love religion. If Even if religion is the opium of the masses, well, that opium is something the Muslim world needs more of. Seems that it, religion is the opiate of, uh, of of the Christian masses. It certainly doesn't seem the opiate of the Muslim masses. <laughs> I could say something here, but I do. I do prefer my career to my quips. Anyway, let's get back to the issue at hand. I really need Catholics who are listening to this show who are educated, analytical, and can think for themselves to understand the danger this Pope is putting us in. By coming here and watching the atheist genuflect before him, you will see one of the great charades of our of, our, of the century. All of the the Bernie Sanders, for example, Bernie is a is a particular case. Jewish atheist, Jewish atheist, everything about him sets off comedic shockwaves in me. Bernie Sanders, I know the type. I they were on the margins of my life. They hated America. They hated Christians. I, I know the type. I ran from them. They made me sick. They're, they're the ant antithesis of my existence, that type of Jewish atheist, the liberal, the liberal weasel Jew. That's what I call Bernie Sanders. And look how popular he is with other anti-American weasels who suddenly uh, they love him. But I said yesterday, Bernie Sanders, make no mistake about it, wouldn't be where he is, was it not for the Hillary camp, who may as well be running him. And he may as well be a running dog of the Hillary Clinton camp because by espousing the stupidity that he espouses, it makes her look like a centrist, even though she's a leftist. So he may as well be just a front man for her, a warm-up act. Believe me, if he was a real threat to her, he wouldn't last another day. I don't have to spell it out for you. I'm not talking about Marcy Park. I'm talking about sources of finance. They would dry up overnight. Anyway, let's put that aside. So, I think it's important that we stand up to a liar, no matter who it may be, no matter what garments he may be wearing. We've done it with the president because you know what he is. We've criticized him correctly because he's done everything we feared he would do. And he's doubling down now and tripling down as fast as he can. So, let's go back in time a little bit. And, and by the way, I invite you to call 855-407-282, but please don't right now because the lines are jammed on this subject of the false prophet coming to town. And again, if you get on the air today, I will send you a free copy of Government Zero, which will be out in a month. I can just get you one of the first printing editions to give out to a Catholic friend who doesn't understand what's going on and what this man is. But nevertheless, let's go back a few years, a few decades really, to one of the original satirists, one of the great comedians of all time, the father of stand-up comedy, and that would be Lenny Bruce, in his great piece, Religion Incorporated, Robert Rowlett, Understand Them. They would say that Lenny Bruce was a liberal because he wasn't, actually, he really wasn't. He also said a Jew in the dictionary is one who was descended from the ancient tribe of Judea, or one who was regarded as a descendant from that tribe. That's what it says in the dictionary. But you and I know what a Jew is, one who killed our Lord. There should be a statute of limitations for that crime. <laughs> Here's the last one I like. If something about the human body disgusts you, the fault lies with the manufacturer. Alternative, if God created the body and the body is dirty, then the fault lies with the manufacturer. If Jesus had been, here's what he said, this is a little controversial, don't get mad at me. If Jesus had been killed 20 years ago, Catholic school children would be wearing the little electric chairs around their necks instead of crosses. Oh, oh, that's cutting. Oh, boy. And he says, every day people are staying away from the church and going back to God. <laughs> Every day, people are staying away from the church and going back to God. He also said the only honest art form is laughter, comedy. You can't fake it. Try to fake three laughs in an hour. They'll take you away, man. You can't. 
The role of a comedian is to make the audience laugh in a minimum of once every 15 seconds. Let's see. That is good stuff. Here's something really funny. You've got Lennon's Pope doing a tour, a 10-city tour, uh, bigger than the Rolling Stones. It's a one-man act, yet he draws bigger crowds than the Rolling Stones. And the crowd's intelligence is on about on the same level as the Stone crowds and the Rolling Stones to believe this, this nonsense. Criticizing free markets, criticizing capitalism, criticizing our way of life, attacking us for using air conditioning, saying wealth is ugly, and the wealth of the Roman Catholic Church is impossible to calculate, according to the National Post. They said, in truth, the church itself likely could not answer that question, even if it wished to. Its investments and spending are kept secret. Its real estate and art have not been properly evaluated since the church would never sell them. There is no doubt, however, that between the church's priceless art, land, gold, and investments across the globe, it is one of the wealthiest institutions on earth. Since 313 AD, when Catholicism became the official religion of the Roman Empire, its power has been in near constant growth. The church was able to acquire land, mostly not most notably the papal states surrounding Rome, convert pagan temples and claim relics for itself. And over 300 years, it became one of Europe's largest landowners. Oh, for the next thousand years, tithes and tributes flowed in from all over Europe. Non-Christians and even fellow Christians were killed and their property confiscated. For example, the Fourth Crusade and the sack of Constantinople in the early 13th century brought in gold, money, and jewels. We're talking about the hypocrisy of a Leninist pope to come here and lecture us about the, the evils of capitalism and not give away an ounce of gold to the poor, not take in 1,000 Syrian refugees while telling us that it's our moral obligation to flood our country with those who are antithetical to our way of life. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. The uh, Vatican's portfolio includes property in London, including the building housing Bulgari Jewelers and the apartment buildings in Paris and Switzerland. What do we know about the church's finances? According to uh, the National Post, uh, they don't know much about it. It's very hidden. If you remember the Godfather movies and the Vatican Bank scandal at the time, remember that story? Even Coppola touched on the Vatican Bank scandal. No one really knows. And God bless them, whatever they have is theirs. I don't know where they got the holdings they, over the thousands of years, who only knows? We know, whatever. But most of it's kicked up from the poor people around the world who throw the money into the box. And it kicks up to, to, uh, to the top. And the church has great influence. Great influence. Can you name the head of the Jewish people in America or the world? There is none. Can you name the head of the Protestant people in the world? I don't know of one. Can you name the head of the Buddhist people? Can you name the Hindu, head of the Hindu people? Can you name the head of the Muslim people? There is none. Why is it only the Catholics have a hierarchy that leads to Rome and that this Pope speaks for them? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Children, children of man who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, bound in misery and chains of iron, he will bring them out of darkness and the shadow of death and will sunder their bonds, foolish sinners, afflicted because of their sinful ways and their wrongdoings. Their soul loads all food and they reach the gates of death. They cry out to the Lord in their distress and he saves them from their afflictions. He sends forth his word and heals them. 
This is the prayer that uh, millions of religious Jews, or shall I say, uh, observant Jews, will be saying tonight in Hebrew with 